Hey besties, right now I'm in the country of Portugal and I want to say a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, Babbel, one of the top language learning apps in the world. One of the biggest lessons I've learned from doing this show is that being able to communicate with people from different backgrounds is absolutely essential. You can gain a ton of insight and appreciation for other cultures through language. And that's why I love that we are partnering with this easy to use language learning platform, Babbel. Babbel is a great app that gives you the right tools to learn languages in quick and practical ways. They teach real world conversations using lessons designed by actual professional teachers, not AI or machines. One of my favorite things about Babbel is that they offer multiple ways for you to learn quickly, including cool podcasts, games, live classes, and videos. Babbel uses award-winning technology to get you speaking in just three weeks. Tudo bem? Tudo bem? If I had Babbel when our team went to Spanish-speaking countries like Mexico or Cuba, I would have been able to confidently say, donde esta el baño? Instead, I had an accident because I didn't have Babbel. I urge you to start your language learning journey today. Click the link in the description below to get 60% off your subscription. Ahora, on to the show. In this video, I'm going to attempt to spend $100 on street food here in Jakarta, Indonesia. Actually, it's Tongadong, but nobody knows that place, so let's call it Jakarta. Did you know Jakarta has a population of over 10 million people? Less than one century ago, there was only a population of 150,000 people. It's a lot of bang. You need a queen. Hey, it's a toy guy. <laughs> let's go find some food. We've come to our first location right here. I'm not sure if it's expensive, but it is very cool. You'll see why it's soon. This right here. It's basically just puffed cereal. Actually, this is not the cool part. This is the crunchy part. This is definitely not gonna get a hit of milk. It's gonna get a hit of something completely different. Let me show you. In this tank is liquid nitrogen. It's what killed the bad guy in Terminator 2. It can also go on your street food. Oh my God, look at that. She puts it all over the food. It is smoking up. So now our crispy snacks, they are cold, but they need a little bit of flavor. Oh, even more cold. And then chocolate on top. Some giant toothpicks put inside and we're ready to try it out. Thank you. Ooh, that's cold. Come take a look at this. The chocolate is frozen on top and it is just bellowing out this steam from inside. So cool. My teeth are a little bit sensitive to cold because I have a couple fillings from when I was a little bit of a kid. Let's see how it goes. Oh man, it feels like styrofoam. It does not taste like styrofoam. It tastes like very cold chocolate. It's almost like I'm smoking cigarettes, but YouTube can't demonetize me. This is something to show your friends to impress your date. Maybe not to impress your date. How much does this cost? This costs roughly a little bit more than a dollar. So no, maybe not a good food to impress your date, but to, impre ah, to impress a child. This is the best part right here. Look at all the chocolate that was dripping down. It's become solid now and it's kind of icy on the outside. It's so cool. Food technology. I love it. For our second location, we've come to Baby Crab Crispy. In Jakarta, not only can you get crabs, but you can eat them too. You can eat the whole body. So it's not like I'm gonna be reaching inside these crab legs and pulling out meat. It's probably full of calcium, but let's find out for sure. That's lovely. There's a little bit of seasoning on there already, but you can add more of your own, including cheese, spice, barbecue. Have you ever had cheesy crabs? I haven't. Oh, there you go. Look at that. <laughs> I need water. Be careful. Do not take a big inhale as you take a bite. You will have a cheese coated throat. Ironically, this would be a great drinking food. I mean, it's so salty, it's crunchy. It makes you want to wash it down with something nice and cool. This is spicy. Not super spicy. What I like about this dish is that everybody's got the obvious fried stuff, French fries, nasi goreng. But this lady said, F that. I'm going to take crabs and fry them, and I'm going to make that a fun nighttime street food. And by gosh, she has done it. We are getting deep into the Indonesian local food scene right now with a food called Jilar. Right? No. Classic Kevin. He just he just looked at me and shook his head like so disappointed. Jilar. Jilar. This I don't know what to make of it. I see noodles, I see different types of meats. Some meats that have been obviously colored with food coloring because they're bright pink. There's also tapioca, there's cupcake tins. Let's follow the recipe and see exactly how this works. Food one, tapioca something. And then we've got noodles. More meat coming on the way. Unnaturally pink sausages. Then we have meatballs that are not been in a ball shape for quite some time. And then fish cake. What would go better with all this meat than some fish? So all that is literally gonna fry here in all this oil. This dish is wild and it does not make sense to me. Oh yeah. Good, I was just thinking we should put more oil. This food is madness, and this lady has no boundaries. Some time has passed. She is now mixing the meats about, making sure they are all equally saturated and doused in pure oil. Is it olive oil? Palm oil. It's palm. Palm oil is one of the finest of all the oils. That's the healthiest one. It's so healthy. Oh, so this is liquid egg that she's pouring in. Look at that. 
Now that everything is done, it goes into the cup of destiny. There's still a lot of oil in there. Yikes, that's a thousand calories right there. Next, this is seasoning powder. There's many different options here. Cheese, spicy, like our last location. This one is just barbecue. I didn't want to go for anything too crazy because that meat selection is already pretty wild. It's getting poured into the final eating vessel and we're going to try this out in just a moment. Sadimagasi, come take a look. All these ingredients, now they've all blended together. It kind of reminds me of like some kind of a casserole or a hot dish my mom would make in Minnesota. Texture is very nice, quite chewy, and then you don't know what meat you're getting because you're getting a little bit of all of them. That pink sausage, do you think, what animal is that from? I have no idea. I gotta say, it's irresistible. The spice is somehow super savory. It tastes like there's MSG in there, but it's sweet too. And there's some crunchy bits as well. This is the real taste of Jakarta. Chilar. Huh? Okay, keep moving. Dish number four. This is called Tulur. Uh, hold on. Tul tel telor. Telor gulung. Mmm. I sound like a local. It's essentially eggs and rice vermicelli fried and rolled up on a stick. They also have a sausage version. I'm going to go back really quick and see how they make it. Here, you're going to see the magic take place. So he takes a squirt bottle full of eggs, puts that in the oil. It covers the surface of the oil. It cooks, and then he's able just to wrap it up like that right on the stick. Boom. Done. And then he just repeats that about 1,500 times a night. All right. Then they're going to put some sauce in there in the bag and actually fill the bag up with sauce. Oh, and that's someone else's order. Good choice. Like I said, this place has three versions. We're gonna try just the plain original egg first, and then they have a sauce in here. It looks like a watery tomato sauce. The skill to get an egg on a stick, that seems like it would be really difficult, but he does it. Try it out. It's like a diluted hot sauce. I love it. It just tastes like scrambled eggs on a stick. This is the part that's dangerous. Should I eat it from this way or? Uh-oh, I didn't get it off. I think that looked wrong. So that is the original model. I want to try the one with vermicelli next. First, he puts in the vermicelli, puts the eggs on top, rolls it up, boom, easy peasy. Look at that, that perfect shape every time. Now that's going to get the sauce treatment too. It tastes like eggs, but more noodly. I knew it. It is so satisfying. It has a bouncy texture. They can put a little bit more intense sauce in there. I do feel like they bought hot sauce and then poured like water into the hot sauce a little bit. Make it last longer, but this is good. And that is not their last variation. They also have it with sausage. Right here, we have our sausage. Why are there so many loud people here? Look, there's literally a panda with a speaker. Try it out. That is not like the finest German sausage I've ever had. It is a little bit chewy and it feels like it's just kind of been hanging out for a little while. Out of the three for sure, the vermicelli with the egg is my absolute favorite. For all of these, it's 10,000 each. That means 30,000 total, maybe like around a buck and a half. That is very affordable. I need to start spending some serious money if we're going to make it to $100. Ah! Boom, right here, our next food. This is basso, also known as a giant freaking meatball on a stick. This one's a little bit well done. And these are little small balls, but all balls matter. Could I have one of these, please? All right, he takes the ball. First, the spicy sauce, a lot of it, apparently. Whoa, okay, that's good, that's good. Oh my gosh, this thing is literally drowning in sauce. What sauce is this? I guess I'm getting all the sauces. I did not know until right now. And then this right here is mayonnaise. He closes it up and that is ready to go. Thank you. Take a look at that. He violently sauced it like he was angry at it. When I asked what type of meat it was, they didn't say chicken, they didn't say beef. Do you know what they said? Cattle. All right, let's try it out. Oh, the amount of sauce is wild, it's gloopy, it's very salty. The sauce is making it slide down my throat like a slip and slide. But I gotta say, I actually like the flavor combination there. It is spicy, it is creamy from the mayonnaise, and there's some sweet barbecue in there too. Take a look inside. Even though this is cattle, it's not 100% cattle. There are some fillers inside too. Flours, starches, things like that. So it's not 100% pure meat. You're hoping to eat this on your weightlifting diet. Maybe think twice. It's 15,000 under a dollar for three huge balls. That's incredibly affordable. We are making our way down the market and it just seems to keep going and going and going. Anyways, right behind me is our next destination. This place has lumpia. I've only heard of lumpia when I was in the Philippines. I'm guessing it's gonna be the same thing. Kind of a little bit of a crunchy spring roll. Here they mix it with other ingredients. They have an expensive special version, lumpia pasa special. I'm gonna order that up, try it out, see how it goes. The lumpia special has begun, starting with the finest olive oil. A Little bit of garlic paste, mix around the garlic paste. Next, an egg. So this is called lumpia. I'm waiting for any moment 
there's gonna be a fried spring roll going inside here, but let's see. We basically have garlic scrambled eggs at this point. Then here, this is jicama being added next. Bean sprouts coming in hot, and then the magic potion, MSG. And then this is a spicy sambal going on top. That is chicken in a bag. Very cool. And then here's some rice noodles. Mix it up. He places a delicate banana leaf inside a giant styrofoam container. Oh, is this what makes it lumpia? So he gets the lumpia wrapper here. He puts it in the styrofoam container, and all that is gonna go in there. This is gonna be the world's biggest lumpia. All right, first, he puts on a sweet glaze. We have our special fillings that goes inside. Okay, even more sweet sauce. He takes it, he folds it like a giant sandwich, like some kind of Mexican torta. How is this gonna be eaten? All right, so right here is the final product. This is the wrapper for the lumpia, and then that is everything underneath. It's like a pie, tons of fillings inside. Oh, it's so hot, gorgeous. Let's try it out. Mm. There's a ton of texture from the bean sprouts. Gives it a little bit of an earthy flavor. I like the egg in there. What I'm gonna do is make my own roll because I can't stand not having this be a roll. Oh, come on, come on. Oh no, oh, it's not working at all. Oh, guys, it's perfect. <laughs> I don't know what this is, but let's try it out. The wrapper is not adding a lot anyways. It's dry, it's flavorless, it's flexible, but um, really what you want is just the guts, all the insides right here. Mm. A very respectable dish, 20,000, about a dollar. Very affordable. This I think you could legitimately eat as a meal and not die later that day. Let's keep moving. We have come to our final destination because I cannot eat anymore. It is very dangerous to mix this many different types of... It is very dangerous to mix this many types of street food in my stomach. It is a recipe for disaster. Right now, dessert. Sarabi Royale, or Royal. Ketan Kinka Durian. I don't know what any of these words mean, but here's what I do know. They make a pancake inside of a clay dish here. It's pandan flavored, that's why it's green. And then they have durian in the sauce that goes on top. Let's see how they make it. So this is with the original batter, almost done cooking. I mean, look how delightful that is with all the holes inside. That's how you know it's almost done. And then these right here, oh, look at that. Bright green, this is flavored with pandan. It looks beautiful. Okay, there we go. We got both pancakes in the plastic. This here is a durian sauce, and that's gonna go on top. That is what's so special. Durian, the world's smelliest fruit. The fruit that's banned in hotels, airports, mausoleums, and birthing rooms. Look at that. So that is a complete product. We have our final dessert right here. Come and take a look. I'm used to eating a fluffy pancake with something more like maple syrup, but I'll take a durian glaze anytime. God, love at first bite. The pancake is perfectly moist, soft, pillowy. And then that glaze, it's just a very sweet sauce, but not over sweet. It just captured the durian flavor perfectly. If you don't like durian, you will not enjoy this. Did we get to 100 yet? It is uncertain because this is not helping. This is actually one of the cheaper foods of the day. I would have to eat 200 pancakes to get to $100. This is our last food. The only thing we have to do now is contabulate all the foods I ate today and see how close did I get to $100. Maybe it's not quite 100, but maybe it's like 98. Probably not, let's find out. The goal was to spend 100, I'm doing the math right now. The number that I spent is gonna appear on the screen. It is not enough. I think in this market, it is truly impossible to spend $100. You would have to bring 10 of your friends here and still potentially not even get to $100. Last time I came to Jakarta, I had all the kind of classic staples of Indonesian street food. I had the fried rice and the fried noodles and the satay. But this time, I saw so many new food creations, things I've never seen before. The egg on a stick, the lumpia that isn't a lumpia. So many crazy, so many interesting street food creations here. I had a great time. Anyways, guys, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Oh, peace. All right, off to uh, a doctor to check my intestines. I ate way too many weird things. <laughs> Welcome to the Best Ever Merch Store, where you can check out our brand new designs. Best Ever Bandanas in black, white, and red. The Please Send Nudes Hoodie. Pillow Soft Fabric with a quality custom graphic inlay. And our Street Food Around the World Graphic Tee. We're now shipping everywhere around the world. Just visit shopbesteverfood.com or click the link in the description below to get your new merch today. A peace.